Oh, by the way, I just want to get this out of the way so I don't seem like a dick. Okay. Um, I had two friends who were at my, uh, um, we were at a thing the other day, and we were playing your last video of, uh, of man's here rocking Mr. Ego. Yeah. And these guys, one of them was from Serbia, and the other one was Greek, and um, they were very dark skinned, and they did not like. They called uh, Mr. Rocky, uh, Rocky Mr. Ego, not technically white. I don't fucking care, but they just wanted me to address that to you. Okay. Well, they're they're basically wrong. I mean, if you're, I mean, you can claim that if you're just gonna have three, the the the, the golden three types, and there's the yeah um, white, black, and and some Asian, whatever. Um, uh, was it the uh, um, Caucasian, Mongoloid, and Negroid, or whatever, but that's clearly um, not acceptable um, across the span of those colours. And if you're going to be a white nationalist, as he seems to want to be, you do have to actually be like white, and he isn't. He's clearly, you know, of Mediterranean, um, you vaguely even sort of dare I say Middle Eastern looking chap at times. So you know, I'm not. I don't see that anyone should be offended by that because he isn't strictly speaking white, really, is he? I mean, he's, or he, well, he's very light skinned, but he isn't really Caucasian in the general sense. So, and not just that, but he wouldn't be accepted as such by the white nationalist brethren that he thinks he would be. So, fuck him. A lot of the white nationalists in uh, Greece and then also in uh, Italy are pretty like light skinned, also. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's why I don't really give two fucks. Like when they're going about. Um, uh, uh, white nationalists yeah, yeah, going yeah, about yeah. having white nations and stuff. Well, where do you stop with that? <laughs> exactly. Is, is a Sicilian white enough? Is a is a, uh, a, a, a ironically yeah. is a is a Cypriot white enough for you? What about it's, someone from the the Russian steppes? Is that is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, I have some very interesting videos for today. Uh, more on I d looked all for the, like the last month for really insane shit, like top top level insane. And I think I found it for this ep week uh, month's episode. Well, let's do it because if it's if it's anything like previous episodes, it's going to be mental. I love it. Okay, this is only thirty seconds, but it's fucking bizarre. Got it from what the the USA Today. You know the paper? Yeah. Yeah, they had this bizarre news story. It's weird as all hell. Okay, cool. Oh, where is it? Oh, here it is. I I looked into it. apparently that story. Um, the clown on the loose is from all uh, is in Detroit. So I don't know what that says. Oh, okay. Well, um, it, well, it, that's just fucking weird. I don't. Yeah. Because well, technically, sitting. he's not doing anything wrong, but that's me. No, no, no. That was just being weird. Yeah. It's oh, I had, a, I had a, in the last few days a, a, an encounter with Matt Foley. With who? Sorry. Oh, uh, people in the alt right who don't like Matt Foley call they call him Matt Foley. Oh right, yeah, okay, yes. I mean a sat I mean a satire video because I was at a, um I was at a, a party a, a club he was at the, like the same night as him, and he was just bitching about like I mean oh I was I was there I'll beat the shit out of you but I wasn't there when he was there so it doesn't matter anywhere so like he took it personally on Twitter too. Matt, Matt Forney would not beat the shit out of anyone. Matt Forney is I think as he whenever he's described himself being in any physical danger even by his own words he is an absolute coward. Exactly. That's what I told him. I was like, oh, like, like he was saying, I was, I made the video so I'll beat the shit out of you. He was like, oh, really? I'll pwn you. Like, because I'm bigger than you and all, like, but you're like a hobbit. You're, he's a man's a hobbit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, dare, dare I say, a troll. Yes. Yeah. A troll under the bridge. Here we go. Let me read this. I love that. I would have, sorry, I'm stuttering. I would have totally to call you out at that party, Matt Forney, with my baby pink, uh, I, I don't know what that word is. Took. Uh, okay, whatever. And Arini just in the comic section. It was it was so funny. I was like, so I said to Arini and Matt Forney in the comic section and privately in the Twitter, if you want to fight me, I'll rent a room out and uh, uh like a rent like like I, did, I went AIU like oh, oh you want to come to my city? I'll fucking fight you like. 
<laughs> oh, the alt right. Oh, amazing, aren't they? Did you see Hillary Clinton call them out? That was quite good. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, it, I think... I, I, are you familiar with the YouTuber Captain England at all? I'm not. No. He like he only has 900 subs. No, 900. He has 99 subs, but over all all nine of his videos have around a million hits. Well, he's got 99 problems, but audience retention is clearly one. Yes. Yeah. That's that's a, that is. I think the world deserved a joke as good as that. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yep. Well, this video apparently made the presses for multiple reasons. Okay. Audio. The message today, so it's quite an old one. This, attention to this. Oh, sorry, this is yeah, a no. relatively old one. Given that, no, it's... Only, this is only six months old. Oh, that's what, yeah, well, that's what I mean because it says useless prime minister about David Cameron, who no longer okay. is, but frankly, his replacement isn't much better. But there you go. Yep. This is a message for David Cameron. I guess that by now you've been seeing my messages that I've been sending to Jihadi John. <laughs> Hang on, whoa, 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 just. Just pause there, right, before we even get into it. Uh, he has a Jeremy Kyle poster. I know. That, that's fucking weird. Yeah. That, I mean, does that translate into America? Do people know who he is? I don't know. I, I know he's a, um, forget, it's a long story. Yeah, well, basically he's, uh, um, he's like Jerry Springer. Like he yeah. gets weird dysfunctional people and exploits them for his own financial ends. Uh, but even worse... Because he's yeah. he's much more judgmental and in your face, and frankly, if he got hit by a bus, I would smile. <laughs> this video is really funny. Just wait for it. I'm not hiding my face. I'm no threat to you. I'm no threat to your government, and I'm no threat to your society of Great Britain. You don't fucking say. You're just some cunt in your room making a video. Of course you're not. What? <laughs> what? Oh. Like, like, yeah. You're listening. It's even funnier. Yeah. yeah. All this. What you want to do? It's to get all the Muslims, the ones that weren't born in this country, and the Islamics, and the Pakistanis, <laughs> and not born in this country. Hang on, hang on. And the Islamics. How are you yeah. going to get all the Muslims and the Islamics? That's ridiculous. How's that going to work, you uh, saucy? And get them out. Also, what, the, what in the fuck is happening with the borders of his screen? I don't know. They're wobbling from side... What? What? That's, that's really confusing. <laughs> Someone told me. I can't, I can't concentrate on his bigotry when he's got mental visuals going on as well. It's just too much. <laughs> One of his videos is like 33 minutes, just horrible noises, and then like the next 10 minutes of him just shouting in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> he's the, basically, he's the alt right like, distilled into its perfectly yeah. horrendous form. Get rid of him. You want to end all this, this is how you're going to do it. Get rid of all of them, send them packing, then... Hang on, hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. But just to address his point rather seriously for a second, how is getting rid of anyone from Britain of any persuasion going to affect what's happening in Syria? Exactly. He's going on about Jihadi John, who was in Syria. He was a British dude, but he was in Syria. So no, how, does getting rid of, how does getting rid of anyone... Remove well, the effect yeah, anything. Uh, this dude and Jaddy John had a like a, a back and forth for months on Twitter, and that's how we got like famous on YouTube. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, you should yeah. definitely argue uh, points of merit with the man who beheads people. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. You fucking idiot. <laughs> Fear of radicalization of the youngsters of, of the Asians of today. They serve us no purpose in this country. Hang on, well, that, again, this is this is actually an important point. When he changes, he uses the phrase Asians yeah. and Islamics, whatever the fuck that's supposed to be, and Muslims interchangeably. That's what we mean by being racist when you're Islamophobic. Yep. Because people who are Islamophobes treat them, basically they're going on about brown people. They don't give a fuck about the, the it's, they're not just attacking the religion, they're attacking immigrants, brown people, Muslimics, whatever. What they do, Cam Mr. Cameron, is they come over here, their families send them over here, they make their money, and then they send them back and build bomb factories and things like that and start wars against us. No, well, I mean, I can't speak for every Muslim, of course, no, 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 no. but many of them send money back because their families are starving to death. Yep. 
all their houses have been bombed out, but by our planes and our drones. Yep. Stupid, dumb, or thick to realise that. Then, as far as I'm concerned, you should not be prime. Well, it doesn't matter if you're prime minister or not. Anyway, you're out next year anyway, because everyone's voting for you, Kip. Anyway. <laughs> hang on a minute. What, did he? Hang on. This was made. What was this it's made not, before the general election or after? No, this was made after the general election. So what the fuck is in about your gun next year then? I don't know. It, I don't. What a mental case. What a mental case. There isn't an election. Well, there'll probably be local elections, but there's not a general yeah. election next year. You just right. So at the end of the day, Mr. Cameron, you, like President Obama, you <laughs> have done nothing <laughs> to ease all the tensions in this country. I'm surprised... Hang on, well, why the fuck? Why the fuck is it Barack Obama's job to ease tension in this country? Ideally, he, he should have no role in that. That's not his fucking job. <laughs> really, you know. I mean, ideally, we don't want him doing the opposite. But ideally, he should be focused on you know America, where he's the president. Just a thought. Great Britain alone has not stood up. Caused the civil war over this matter. <laughs> Race realism. Yeah, yeah. I, to be honest, when I look at when I look at white people like him, I, I always think to myself, if the white genocide was real, at least it would get rid of people like him. So it's not yes. all bad. It's not all bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. It's call me racist or call me not. You are. You you're a racist. Thank, I mean, I didn't need your permission, but thanks for that. You are a racist. <laughs> We don't want packies in our country. There you go. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Didn't didn't even have to wait for that one. You you are a racist, my man. Packies, packies, packies. Get rid of them. We don't want them. It's like it's like a chant. Yeah, packies, packies. You know, I have an article that was written about him in a, some local paper I found doing some research on his Twitter fights of like jihadists. <laughs> it's, oh god he's just he's basically if I was to create a satirical character of like an alt-right idiot yeah this would be him I kind of think he's look at like, his head his head looks like it's, it's <laughs> fucking caving in what's wrong with him <laughs> he looks more like Shrek to me there is there's a touch of the Shreks definitely <laughs> mm. I I mean, and like, also, he doesn't want he doesn't want outsiders on his land. So yeah, he's yeah, yeah. like Shrek in that sense as well. Yep. His early Shrek, his pre donkey Shrek. Simple, yeah. Get rid of him. As far as I'm concerned, you're a useless prime minister, and you serve no purpose to us. You're like Blair. You're like the rest of them. Useless bunches of assholes. Oh, well, well thank, thank you for that incredibly uh, well thought out political opinion there. You're all the same. You, Blair, the rest of them. Brilliant. <laughs> it's like, was that, wasn't that an op-ed in the fucking Washington Post ones? Mm. It was. It was. Ridiculous. Look what you've done to this country. You have done absolutely nothing for this country. Well, I will, I will agree with him on that point. He, yeah. Cameron has been a fucking nightmare. He's been... Yeah. Uh, led to just unbelievable amounts of poverty, um, kicking fucking disabled people um, off their benefits um, to commit suicide in record numbers, homelessness through the fucking roof. Uh, the you know, but but tax cuts is uh, tax cuts for the rich. So you know, there's that. Um, but yeah, but the, no, he's not annoyed about that. He's annoyed that yeah. he hasn't been Islamophobic enough. <laughs> Brilliant. And you wonder why we're sick and pissed off with you. We've got no jobs, we've got no homes, because you've allowed too many immigrants into this country. Yes, immigrants? No. Packies. No. <laughs> we don't want them. Wait, wait, there's, there's... Get rid of them. Send them back where they bloody belong. Bloody turbinating son of a bitches. <laughs> 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 oh well, that is. Something now. It's only the fact that I ain't got no money. I buy a fucking great big fucking five o calibre gun, three mile fucking distance, and I go down to bloody Dover and I'd sniper the son of a bitches one by one as they got off the bloody wagons. <laughs> oh my God. You know, do something, Cameron, or else we will.
Oh my god. Simple as. Oh my god. No, you, he wouldn't. I mean, the thing is, that might sound um, quite disturbing in a way that he wouldn't be prepared to do yeah. that. But I think, I mean, I don't know the guy. This, li yeah. this is literally my introduction to him, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't have the get up and go to actually do anything as proactive as that. So he's, he, we're fine. We don't need to worry about him. He's just some sad cunt. Yep. <laughs> Here's an article I found about him, like doing the research about him. He's, he, he went viral fast. Oh, okay. okay. Man uh, after being know. told to remove snake. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it's it's short, like two paragraphs. Worth of damage after being told he couldn't keep his dangerous snake and spiders in the property. Is this the same dude? Oh my god. Daniel Thompson Sullivan, 30, 31. Time has not served him well. Good God. Um, was sent to prison for a total of 40 weeks, fucking hell, at Cambridge Crown Court on Wednesday after pleading guilty to racially aggravated criminal. Hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. How is a crim racially aggravated criminal damage? How is that going to do with him keeping a snake and spiders? What? Those two. Look at those first two, those first two sentences have. I, what is the connection between those two things? That's mental. Right. In May 2009, he wrecked the house of a house near Ampt Hill Road, Bedford, which he had been renting from Gold Crown Property Services based in Ford End Road, Bedford, along with his cousin. Eric Massey, who runs the company, yeah. which rents and sells properties, went along to the yeah. house after Thompson Sullivan contacted him regarding problems with the boiler. While he and while he was there, hang on, whoa, whoa. While he was there, Mr. Massey saw a bag which was moving, and Thompson Sullivan said it was a dangerous snake and proceeded to show him scorpions and spiders he had in tanks in his bedroom. Well, firstly, why would you describe it as a fucking dangerous snake? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Mr. Massey said, I was shocked, and then suddenly he told me to get out of the room because the snake had escaped. I ran and locked myself in my car because I'm scared of snakes. Mr. Massey told Thompson Sullivan that he shouldn't have had animals there as it was not in the not in the contract and they may be dangerous. He told them to remove them. Days later Mr Massey said he received a message from the tenant saying he had moved out so he went round to inspect the property and discovered the damage. He said I couldn't believe it the radiators had been smashed along with washing machine dishwasher tiles and there was a ra racial message on the wall saying Paco I contacted the police straight away. Mr. Thompson Sullivan changed his plea after it was originally listed for trial in Cambridge Crown Court. He was given 39 weeks for criminal damage and then an extra week for failing to attend court on a previous occasion. Brilliant. He, said, he really sounds like an upstanding member of the master race. Um, Mr. Massey said he, went, he wanted people to realise that they cannot get away with this sort of thing. He said, it shows that tenants are punished if they do this. It's not acceptable and I think the whole thing has used so much of the taxpayers' money for one stupid man. Yes. <laughs> That's summed up really rather well. Yeah. And not just that, but we're now going to have to waste even more money because we're going to have to feed him and house him for the next 39, fuck, well, 40 weeks. <laughs> oh. Brilliant. Brilliant. But that's, but that's yeah... The, the, can we kick him out and keep the night? The, the, keep everyone else, but just kick out pricks like him back to, I don't know, the bottom of the fucking sea or something. I don't know. <laughs> they, they can live in the fucking sewers with all the other turds. Exactly. <laughs> Hey, Ramsey! Yeah, Ramsey was revealing that new movie Daniel Radcliffe made about the white nationalists. Um, I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it. It's really good. It's a, it's I, good. I, if anyone's watching this uh, or later or live now, definitely give it a watch or pirate it. I, I don't care to pirate it. <laughs> well, for legal reasons, we would never encourage such things. Yeah, but yeah, pirate yeah. It, definitely pirate it. <laughs> the Nazis are coming! The Nazis are coming! Take you, your fucking, you, fuck, you fucking wish. You wish they were coming. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the Nazis are coming for you. Yeah, Hollywood. <laughs> you put the fucking. That was that echo. Wasn't me. That was in the video.
What? Wow. It's, it sounded like a Nazi did come then. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Hollywood. They, they made another Nazi white supremacist movie. It's called you can't even say it, bro. Supremist. <laughs> Supremist. Supremist. <laughs> You fucking mentally. It's so, and you know, was, this guy's been like, um, Ramsey Paul has been having a major fallout with like Sargon and Tumble for like all the alt rights eating each other alive right now. Yeah, they seem to be getting stuck into Sargon, don't they? Yeah. Really have to, this is going to be the review of the clip, and I'll link to the, the clip to this movie. So here's a scary clip from the movie, and it asks the question You see the type of organization we have here? I don't know, I guess, I guess I need a retarded organization because they're mixing Nazism with the Ku Klux Klan. Oh my god. Oh, oh yeah, there was, there, was, there was no similarity between no those similarity. two groups. No similarities. Fucking weirdo. I don't know, was Hitler a grand wizard? Maybe so. And the movie has as the lead that Jewish actor who played Harry Potter, uh, which I support because in real 1488 organizations, there's a lot of Jews. So, and they- uh, borderline. Borderline accurate to half truth. Is he Jewish? And what does it matter? It's a fucking film. I, exactly, I know. But like, no, uh, like, like, I'm not gonna be involved. In it. I, I forget it. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, a lot, a lot, a lot of white nationalists, like Ramsey Paul, like who are like Eastern European background, go white nationalists and reject your Jew- Judaic background. So that's what he was implying. Well, and that's that. But having mentioned the Nazis, I think it's worth pointing out that Hitler had Jewish ancestry. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Makes it realistic. I can see that. And I'm making this on Monday, August 22nd, 2016. And yet, yeah, there's just another Islamic terrorist attack in Brussels. Nice. They think it might have been mental illness or something. It looked like he looked like he was doing a wanking motion there. That didn't look like a knife to me. That looked like he was jerking off a massive black dick. Well, uh, uh, when he when he said mental illness, look at look at his eyes. Look at his fucking eyes. 2016. And yet, yeah, there's just another Islamic terrorist attack in Brussels. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Look at his fucking eyes. <laughs> mental illness. Yeah. I think it might be mental illness or something. <laughs> you missed it. But if you think of Orlando, you think of Paris, you think of Nice, you think of uh, San Bernardino. I mean, attack after attack after attack of Islamic terrorists. But no, no, no. According to Hollywood, the real threat are these white supremacists. So I, I think they're equally just as fucked up and bad for society. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't think just because you make one film about one thing, it means yeah, exactly. saying that there are no other things in the world. They're bad, exactly. Yeah, and I, I, I thought it. I just the alt right is a very strange hybrid because, like, for a very long time, like I thought, like the alt right was like part of the uh, Tea Party crowd, but apparently, the Tea Party crowd and the alt right don't like each other what at all. Hmm. Well. I, I suppose because the, the Tea Party isn't racist enough. Exactly, probably. When was the last time there really was a white supremacist terrorist attack? Dylan Roof doesn't count. Dylan Roof does count. Dylan Roof, Dylan Roof doesn't count. Yeah, of course. Of course he doesn't. Well, if you set the parameters for what you mean by white supremacist, white then you can basically yeah. say that no white supremacist thing ever happened. But then again, a Muslim can do the very same thing if yep. given the powers to set the parameters for what they claim to be Muslim terrorism. Oh, so really? fuck you with your semantics, you little prick. <laughs> well, you recently you have, uh, you had uh, Joe Cox's death, you had um, yep. the uh, Dylan Roof, there was, um, oh, fuck, what was it? there was a few other ones, who was in, uh, uh, in, in Europe, in the, in the United States. There was, um, oh yeah, the, the shooter in Canada who was shooting Mounties, who was a white nationalist. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm blanking. That's what I'm thinking of. Are we going to... Uh, Chapel Hill, I don't know if that's necessarily white supremacist, but it's certainly... I've looked, I've looked into the evidence. Chapel Hill, he was liberal, but he, he like, swung both ways. He had he liked in Facebook alt-right pages and liberal pages. Well, but, there's probably quite a few like that, actually, yeah. Yeah, so I just, I just think he I just think he was nuts, honestly. At Chapel yeah. Hill. yeah, okay. Even Timothy McVeigh, he wasn't organized as part of any of those organizations. Timothy McVeigh did, actually did a lot of research, and Timothy McVeigh never considered himself alt-right. He always considered himself a narco-capitalist. Well, he was sort of pre-alt-right anyway, wasn't he? Pre- yeah, he was pre-alt-right, I guess. I think it was like David Lane in the early 80s when they shot that Jew in Denver, a Jewish radio host. 
So it's been like over 30 years, yet they're still pushing this. The Nazis are coming. The Nazis are coming. I don't know. I'm like real involved with the alt-right, and I'm sure they consider me part of these Nazis. But in real life, I've never met one like this. You know, a guy wearing the white power. I've never met a guy like that. I, I, it's Maybe they exist. I've seen them online. In fact, uh, Time Magazine, they just interviewed some guy that well, kind of looks like I mean, Neil. He's what? You, you didn't hear that? No, what was that? He said, okay. No, oh, no, I heard that, but what did you say to him? Yeah, yeah, you, what, what do you have love child right here? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you do. He does look like, yeah. yeah. I think they just interviewed some guy that well, kind of looks like Woody Allen's love child. I forget his name. He claimed to be Jewish before, but now he's saying we need to rape people of color and kill them. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like the neo-Nazi in the, the, the movie, I guess, Imperium. Uh, but I've never met anyone in real life that really advocates that point of view. Maybe they exist. I don't know. So anyway, I just thought of confusion. So I thought I'd just try to clarify what's the difference between like National Socialism, the National Socialist German Workers' Party of the 30s and 40s, and the neo-Nazis. All right, most people, when they think of National Socialism, immediately I think of like a tiger tank or a concentration camp or war. But it really wasn't. It was, it was developed as an ideology, kind of like communism or capitalism. In fact, yeah, he, he is correct on that, on that extremely biased and, and yeah. also, uh, um, uh, whitewashing in a certain way. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah it's just... but also, I, uh, it always seems very strange to me, and I think this is actually a thing that um, some communists do as well with Stalin, is that to try and divorce the uh, ideology away from its practical yeah. outcome. Yeah. Oh, totally. I, there, there's a lot of communists do that and socialists. A, a lot. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah. I don't. I don't really care because they kind of con consider that aspect of history to be over and done with by now because it's like. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's well. It's still relevant in terms of its echoes throughout. Yeah, the time, oh, yeah but it's yeah, not. Like it. Yes, yeah, Stalin's not an active part of politics. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Exactly. Reaction to the two, whereas capitalism is all about the individual. So if you make a lot of money and you screw other people, that's fine, right? If you can outsource the jobs, hey, it gets you rich, buys you another yacht. It doesn't matter if it impoverishes your people because it's all about the individual. Communism is kind of in reverse where it's all about the state. Your life belongs to the state and you need to work for the state. Where National Socialism, the idea was that no, the economy works for the people. And if you, you have private businesses, but if something hurts the people, it's not allowed. So it's kind of a combination of government and private inter enterprise. So in the example, if you were trying to outsource jobs to you know raise some more money so you could buy a yacht, the government would probably say, no, it may make you a lot richer, but it hurts the, your fellow people, and we're not going to allow that. This them. is a phenomenally, phenomenally biased piece of nonsense. Oh, yeah, phenomenal. phenomenal. No, no, I'm just, I'm just, it's, it's taking out the racial factor because... Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm saying, like... They didn't, I was they didn't give two fucks about hurting Jewish people. Yeah, no, I, I was thinking, like, I wouldn't, like, have a hypothetically speaking, I wouldn't have a problem with, uh, um, uh, national socialism if it wasn't implied with such disgusting histories and practices in general. Well, the, well, the way it's described here from him, yeah, yeah, that's fine, yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's not what it was. Yeah, it's not what it was. That's my point. Like I'm saying, like, like, um, like, uh, like, um, a lot of people like on the like alt right compare. Uh, the SMP to be oh, equivalent to Nazis, the third position, third position socialist, which is hmm. bullshit. You know, you know, you know the argument I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And also, I've just noticed the title of this is the movie to smear Trump. I don't think it is. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's got anything to do with fucking Trump. No, in the movie, I've seen the movie. The movie they talk about Trump a lot in it. Oh, do they? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's it's I don't I don't think it was planned to be a hit piece. I just think it just they wrote it like at the like. They filmed it in a, like a, a seven week period. So yeah, I was about to say because it would take quite a while, wouldn't it? Usually to create a film, so I would have thought it was before all this. But okay, yeah, whatever. It's, yeah. Oh, it's been over a year, so they filmed it within a six, uh, seven week period within a year. So like they can probably like embellish and add things and take things out. Oh, okay, cool. National socialism. So it is kind of a socialism, but it's different than Marxism. And the national socialist uh, ideology it hated both capitalism and Marxism. And in modern terms, 
surprisingly, it was very progressive. Like they had the single payer health system. They were big on protecting the environment. I've already debunked it. Slaughtered millions of people. people. Yeah. No, but like the only reason the Nazis took over the uh, the the single payer health care system is to compete with the Third Reich. I meant to compete with the Soviet Union. Hmm. They, like I'm saying, the Nazis wouldn't have like gotten where they were without like implementing socialistic policies to compete against the um, Soviet Union. Because if they didn't, if they were just purely strictly capitalistic, people would just be defecting to the Soviet Union instead of the Third Reich. Yeah, I think that's, that's probably true. Yeah. Uh, the early Gestapo was used not to try to fight Jews, but to fight capitalists that were exploiting the workers or had unsafe working conditions. In, in, yeah. Right. So that is flatly untrue. Yeah, it's so untrue. It's so... They, they were attacking Jews from the very beginning. No, it's first the communists and then the socialists, anarchists, then the Jews. Okay, well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, many, many yeah. uh, ironically, many of those would have been Jews, but yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. It's like you can only work 40 hours a week and so forth. So that was national socialism. It was an ideology that could be really anywhere. It could be imported in Russia, it could be in America, it could be in Malaysia. It's it's like capitalism or communism. It's a different type of economic. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. Like it's basically like, sure, but if, like national socialism internationally just appeals to like racial bias. Like I'm saying, like if it wasn't have to discussing like racial bias and like all this crap with Kanar selection theory and like other bullshit uh, evolved in it, it like it, it wouldn't be as able to discuss yeah. as it is now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's kind of a philosophy of life. That's national socialism. <laughs> a philosophy of life which killed millions. Brilliant. Yeah. National Socialist German Workers Party. That's a mouthful. Those were the Nazis. That was the political party that Hitler belonged to. And that the political party advocated national socialism, but the two are kind of separate. You could theoretically have other political parties advocate national socialism without being part of this German Workers Party. So Hitler... He didn't really start this party. He joined it. it, it no, was, well, that's, that's, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's, no, correct. He started it. I, I, you saw it video. I mean, he started it. Well, it, well, yeah, but it was the, he, he joined the German Workers' Party, and then when he became leader, changed it to the National Socialist yeah, German yeah, Workers' yeah. Party. So technically, he did found that party. Yeah. Really. Thule Society, I think, or Tula Society. In English, we call it Thules, T-H-U-L-E. And they were like these intellectuals. They were real esoterics in Vienna. And that's where you get a lot of this um, symbolism, the swastika, the runes. They're into like this German mythology, some Indian mysticism. And anyway, it was kind of a lot of bullshit. But out of that, they formed a workers' party, the Social German Socialist Workers' Party, which Hitler later joined. Early on, he joined it, and he quickly took it over. So, but anyway, that's how you get all the imagery that we think of, like the swastika. It came from that Tula society, and it represented Germany. So, and Hitler always said that the German National Socialist Workers Party, you couldn't export it. It wouldn't make any sense because it's just for Germany. So, if you're in France, or if you're United States, or Australia, it just it would be. Why would you have a swastika? It's not part of your heritage. <laughs> Oh, of course, exactly. That's where it leads into neo Nazism. They're trying and to that, but is that all he's going to say? Pretty much. He's not going to mention the the million the mountains no. of corpses. No. Okay. No. No. He's, yeah, like, he's like trying to whitewash it for his own agenda. Yeah, of course. Yes. So after the war, the winner tends to write the history and the propaganda. It's, it's normal. It always happens. It happened in World War Two. What was different because of still political reasons, the propaganda, it's huge. And it's hard to dig through that. And I've dug through it, and some of the things are like, wow. And you can look at this up, it really happened. Uh, before World War II, you got to look at a society before war, because war is always different. Uh, in the United States, when we had the war with Japan, we put all the Japanese in camps. So, Okay. And I'm, I'm just wondering where he's going to go with this. I, I'm preparing myself for... Uh... My brain had turned sideways in three, mm. two, one. It wasn't just Germany that did that. That was common back then. But before the war, one of the things that just fascinated me, some Jewish shop owner, he sued an SS officer because an SS officer called him a dirty Jew. And he took the SS officer to court, and he won. And so that just, like, blew my mind. How could a Jew sue 
a Nazi officer and win in National Socialist Germany, but he did. So it wasn't exactly, at least prior to the war, what we think of it. And then there's the other myth. I did a video about this that Hitler. Hmm, what's that got to do with anything? I, do, I mean, I don't even know if that's true. I've never heard I that. I, I have no idea. I've never heard that. I, I think he's just yeah. pointing out of his ass. He, I, he left no sources in his video. Well, very well, yeah. Well, that, that, I think that tells you everything. But even if it were true, you, are we supposed to take anything from that? So, okay, one jury yeah, shop on a suit guy, like, next to, take any, yeah, next was, to millions, millions of dead bodies. I was are saying, we, like, are we supposed to... this guy's like word of mouth, who has like like a history of like being affiliated with like the alt right in general. Yeah, but look, we're not. Are we supposed to just ignore the, the mountains of corpses in favor of this one anecdote that we don't know is true? Yeah, exactly. Ridiculous. Fallacious argument. Took all the guns. That was a lie. He actually overturned the communist gun, gun control, made it a lot easier to Germans to own guns. So there's all this bullshit propaganda. But what happened after the war, they made the Nazis into this like cartoon evil, just totally, not even almost human, just, just crazy. Did you can say after the fucking war? Like which war? World War One or two? Like, hmm. did, did, did you catch that subtle manipulation? Yeah. Uh, and from that, that's what the neo-Nazis, that's kind of how they look at it. Neo-Nazis, and I've read their websites, they're rarely, they're not even interested in national socialism, the economic policy. They're not. He's actually correct in that aspect. Okay. A lot of neo-Nazis are not, like, into, like, national socialism. They're just into the racial aspect of it. Like, yeah, I'd be surprised. Yeah. 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 There were probably, but to be fair, there was probably that element of the actual Nazis as well. Probably, I I, I don't know, but I, I I th it seems logical to me. Like, yeah. there could be some exceptions, but mostly they're into trying to wear swastika and hate Jews and be real scary and badass. But that's not what it was originally about in the early thirties. It, it would be like. The Americans went to, let's say, New Guinea, where the headhunters are, and try to explain our concept of democracy, the three branches of government, the executive, the legislative, the the legal. This is such a fallacious argument right now. Mm. <sighs> the concept of free speech and due process. And then we come back years later, okay. and these headhunters are waving the American flag, and they're they're eating hot dogs, and they play baseball, and they talk about how they you know hate the damn Indians, but they have they're still eating people. They don't have any of our government. I mean, I've literally two weeks ago saw Alex Jones say the exact same shit he's saying right now. Me, yeah, because they're all the the alt right hive mind, isn't? It? Yeah. There's yeah. no fucking there's no dissension to be allowed. Yeah. We saw that with Thunderfoot and the Brexit thing. There's oh, no don't dissension. Don't I have to admit, Fringe Elements video about Thunderfoot's Brexit was made me laugh so hard. I was like dying the whole time laughing. <laughs> Just taking the symbolism, but not really what it was all about. And the neo Nazis—that's kind of what they do. The modern—they're—they're they're not even related at all to how the original Nazis were like. So, oh, you really? Not just that, but you haven't explained what the original Nazis exactly. were. Exactly. Like, you haven't explained the sparking the most destructive war humanity has ever known and yeah. genocide on a scale that would be absolutely unthinkable. Because apparently that's not an important part of, of what the Nazis did, exactly. apparently. It's not there. This movie pushes that concept that's just it's retarded, and the people involved with it, the movie says, like, about every other person's an informer, and that's true, they are, or they're just, like, crazy because they want to try to be evil and bad, but this is the myth that Hollywood wants to push. And why there's a flurry of activities about the alt-right or even this movie and they're trying to tie it to Trump, because the idea is any nationalism, ethnic nationalism, that involves white people is very evil. Now we think people think that ethnic nationalism for Jews in Israel is a good thing. In fact, we should support it with our tax dollars. But for white people, for Poland to remain Polish and not African, that's wicked and evil, and that's just like the Nazis. And these Nazis are like Satan. They're just. I, I don't know. I, I, like, we've already debunked a lot of these arguments in other videos. I, but I'm just, yeah, but I don't even. I don't even get where he's going with that. 
Does, I, I don't like. Is he unla- is he okay with ethnic nationalism, but then not okay with it, or what? And, and it's weird because Ramsey Paul in other videos says he is, and other videos says he isn't. So he flip flops so drastically across the political compass. It's so confusing. It hurts me. Because he's a fucking idiot. Clearly, yeah. Doesn't matter yeah. Did you, did you see his interview with BuzzFeed? No, but I imagine it was mental. Yeah. Killers, and they want to kill everyone, and that's all they want. I'm done. Yeah. Talk to you guys later. Fuck off. <laughs> yep. Uh, now, this is going to be funnier. I, I have a, uh, I have a video from a similar alt. I was trying to look for the last month alt-right material, and thank God um, Mr. Uh, Defu has a short video we can actually look and laugh at and point at. Oh, yeah. good, 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 good. Mr. Stefan Molyneux. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Stefan Molyneux from Free Domain Radio. I hope, I hope you're doing, doing well. well. Time <laughs> for some I'm more listener me. questions. Uh, so the first one is, first, I get why you can't stand communism, Steph, because of dictatorship. But what's wrong with socialism? You literally said that you were a socialist during your youth. What turned you away from it? I suppose it wasn't liberalism, so what was it? Second, what's wrong with ideology? Well, um, I was a socialist during my youth, uh, before I got any particular education in philosophy, political science, public choice theory, Austrian economics, objectivism, rationalism, plain old empirical thinking. And actually, if you... Claim some empirical thinking. He doesn't do empirical thinking. No. Rational thinking from Maunu. Yeah. One's production of one's vagina. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Act further than when I was in my early teens, you can actually find me believing in things like the Easter Bunny and the Santa Claus and so on. These are fantasies designed to be outgrown. So what turned me okay. away from it was moving out of the realm of feels and into the realm of of things and okay that made no fucking sense socialism is real those things are not real mm. but as he, he contradicts himself it's a, it's a he's going to contradict himself i, I know i I've, i know how my thinks and it's, it's scary that i do know how he thinks he's like he's, he, you, you get what i'm saying right like yeah yeah he's gonna non sequitur in three two one is of course the big challenge socialism is a child's view of deficiency, right? Some people are wealthy and some people are poor. It's like that picture you see of the guy living in a cardboard box and behind him are the giant towers of some financial uh, building. And the idea, of course, is like if you have a kid with no ice cream and a kid with two scoops of ice cream, you take one scoop of ice cream from the kid with two and you give it to the one with none and lo and behold, everyone has ice cream. Uh, Oh my fucking God, that hurt my head. Like, how do you even, like, respond to that? That, that statement is so open-ended. It can go in so many fucking directions, like, refuting. Well, it, clearly, clearly, if you're for the sharing of ice cream, you want yeah. him to be shot dead. Shot, exactly. Uh, uh, and I was thinking, uh, I, I don't know, I'm, I, I forgot. A line in King Lear, that distribution should undo excess, and each man have enough. Uh, it is an age-old fantasy that the redistribution of wealth... Uh, smooths out the um, problem, so the disparities in income, and you can make the poor richer by taking from the rich and giving to the poor. Uh, you're not making them richer, just making them have a more stable st- stability. Yeah. You're, um, you're meaning so that they don't starve to death. Exactly. Uh, it's, uh, a, um, uh, it views society as children that don't act in their own self-interest, and uh, it is a parent's view of a disparity between children. Like it or not, who we are and what we get as adults, you know, outside some brain damage or some physical disability, uh, and largely the result of choices that we make. Uh, we don't all start at the same place on the starting line, but. Well, why not fucking level the starting field? Like, uh... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So clearly it's not about choices. Exactly. Yeah. If you're born the, law, the, the son of a lord and you've got, you know, millions of fucking dollars or whatever. That clearly yeah. means that you can make all the bad decisions you ever really want to and still be fine. Yeah. Whereas you can be born dirt poor, make all the good decisions, and still get fucked. Yep. 
And this is my Molly's own logic here. It's like we're using his own logic to like. It's like you get my point. Like yeah, if, exactly, it's, it's nonsense. Yeah, I can't wait to see what his explanation of what's wrong with ideology, considering. Oh my god! I already watched ideology it. embodied. Is going to be off the hinges. It's... Where we end up has a lot more to do with how hard we work and how much we're willing to take self criticism and how much we're willing to work with others. Says the man who DMCA's everyone. Yeah. Yeah compromise and intelligently allocate our life's resources uh, and again, poor house again another, an, another anarcho-capitalist who wants to get rid of the state apart yeah, from yeah. when he wants the dmca people and use government legislation to do so prick i don't know why they can't like i'm not saying advocating this but i don't know why the dmca has to be like a state-run function like, couldn't it like just be private like uh, like i don't want to sound like him like i'm just saying like, <laughs> like, I'm not, exactly. like what, we need, what we need is private sector solutions clearly no, I mean, like, why can't YouTube have their own DMCA function instead of like a like a like a like a third party, like the government third party? That's what I mean. Like, why can't YouTube? Well, I suppose from from a, a, a point of view of um, uh, the uh, the government, you would yeah. have to, I suppose, if you're going to have the concept of intellectual property as a thing, which I think is fair oh, enough. Yeah, if, yeah. if you create a film, you can't just have it being distributed by any fucker. Yeah, uh, then you have to have the government do that, unless you genuinely do believe in an anarcho-capitalist society. In which case, there's no such thing as a government. But yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. No, but you get my point. At least, like in the small, small aspect of it. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there should be some massively overarching uh, yeah. government legislation. This is one area where I really do feel a bit of light touch regulation wouldn't be the end of the world. Maybe they, if they had this kind of um, incredibly restrictive uh, legislation on, say, Wall Street, the world would be in a better place. Yeah, but this doesn't need to be regulated that harshly. But yeah, uh, yeah. So two people households, which work an average of 10 or so hours a week. So um, people can choose to work less, and the result of that is that they have less money. Uh, people can just choose to work harder, and as a result, they generally have more money. Now, it's true that there are idiots who are born into money. And Donald Trump. Well, like you, you were sent to a private boarding school. Yep, and now he rants on the internet for money. Yep. Yep. Uh, the market does a very good job of separating idiots from their money, right? There's an old statement or saying that used to be made back before the government controlled most of the economy, and it was shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations. And that means, you know, shirt sleeves is a manual laborer. Some guy works really hard, uh, gets out of manual labor, becomes an office worker or a business manager or some sort of magnet, and then his kids don't inherit his abilities, his IQ, his work ethic, whatever. Maybe he's a bad parent because he's working too much. And what happens is the kids then end up uh, going back to shirt sleeves again. Here, there was a... This guy is just fucking rambling. That didn't yeah. mean anything. What a no, load of shite. It does not mean anything. <laughs> really an empire that had been going on for ever, decades and decades and decades, over 100 years, I think, uh, called Eaton's. And... Um, I think there were four sons and Eaton's is wiped off the map because they invested badly. They thought it'd be really smart to have no sales, everyday low prices, no sales. And so they went against the grain of retailing, which is to lure people in with sales and then upsell them to other things. He picked the worst example. He could have picked like Walmart, Costco, or like some are fucking like, well, like real uh, uh, major retailer. Hmm. Like, like, um, the one you just mentioned, the reason they uh, went bankrupt in the 80s is because th they were manufacturing products in the U.S. that was too expensive and they were making them really cheap. So they crashed. But then if Walmart came around and just destroyed everything. Yeah. You still there? Yeah, I'm being distracted by my cat. Okay. Get in. Come on. <laughs> dickhead. <laughs> Sorry, oh, my cat's a dickhead. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, go on. No, I was just saying, how, like, like, what Molyneux was arguing is he's arguing the idea of Walmart before Walmart was a thing. Hmm. These Walmart didn't actually Walmart was invented in the fifties, but didn't actually become a thing until the uh, like early two thousands. Okay. Right. Oh. Yeah. Cat, I'm gonna knock you out. <laughs> Sorry, he's being very, very annoying. Um, yeah, anyway, go on. Let's let's get through this because yeah. Mullen used it swat. And uh, the company was bought out. It is no more. And uh, so that, you know, if you don't like the rich, just wait a bit. 
<laughs> they're probably not going to stay rich. Now, that's before uh, rich people could invest in the power of the government to protect them from competition. And this is foundational. If you want... What are you talking about? That's I, I, been around I, forever. It's not. I, I know. But like, that's li literally yeah. fucking feudalism was that. I know. Would I also kind of come to this conclusion that I feel like a company in this day and age can never go bankrupt because some bigger companies are going to buy it out in the first place and change it. Well, no, well, we've seen banks go under, haven't we? Yeah, we've seen basically. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like not. I'm talking about like like like, just, like companies like make shit like like uh, video games or like uh, film companies that like get yeah. bankrupt. Yeah, they get bought in, absorbed, and sort of. Yeah, like, absorbed in like yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So I think we're like in the, the part of history where companies are no longer able to fail. They just get I don't know if that's necessarily true, but okay. Yeah, yeah you get my point. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's very cannibalistic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Disparities and reduce the aggregation of unearned income. What you need to do is reduce or eliminate the power of the state to control the economy. There we go. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. to everything. Yep. Yeah. Rich people to compete with poor people because poor people have a much lower standard of living. So when I first was an entrepreneur, I was living in a room. <laughs> uh, in a room, uh, it was me, four gay guys, a lesbian. It's really telling to his personal life. Really telling. <laughs> was he one of the four gay guys or what? I, I don't know. I don't want to open up doors and make accusations, but I would just say wink, wink. Did I? Okay. And lots and lots of work. Uh, my rent was $270 a month, uh, all in. Uh, and um, kind of tough for somebody who has to pay $5,000 a month, a month in his mortgage to compete with, right, with me. So uh, I had low income because I was broke, just got out of grad school, and I didn't have a car. And so I was able to work really hard, really cheap. So the best way to deal with income disparities is just wait and let the free market reward the hardworking and reward the diligent and reward the honorable and the virtuous and take resources it away re no it do that's the nonsense it doesn't. it doesn't fucking reward the virtuous no it, it doesn't rewards people who run sweatshops yes yes For fuck's sake it rewards people who destroy local you know um, ecology yeah lazy or bad or uh, combative uselessly and so on so you just you just start to think about it and and you recognize of course that any agency that you create to redistribute income uh, that's called the government is going to have to do it by force right so it's good the initiation of force against me yeah you want me shot <laughs> to redistribute that income by force now, once you create an agency in society that has the power to redistribute income by force, well, who is it going to respond to more, the rich or the poor, right? So what it's going to do is it's going to want to create, it's not conscious, it's just the way the system works out, right? I mean, each little cigarette can make you sick. You're not smoking cigarettes in order to get sick. It's just an inevitable byproduct of the habit. And the habit called the state, it's... The habit called the state, wow. Yeah. Oh, it is. He's a he's a free market religion. Exactly. Yeah. Of course, is to create reliable repeat voters, and the way that it does that is it creates a dependent class, and once you create a dependent class, then that 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 group of people are going to vote for you. Uh, and are going to vote for your policies and so on, which is why nobody talks about really fundamentally cutting any entitlement programs because the government has bred those people and crushed them uh, under... But the most of those entitlement programs make up a sliver of the percentage of the government spending. A lot of it goes yeah. to, yeah. you know, subsidising massive corporations who pay their yeah. employees slave labour wages. Pretty much. For state to be passive drip drip morphine recipients with the endless ache called no lives requiring the state to continue and um and for the rich what you do is you create uh, you threaten them with rules that go against their interest and then you either um withdraw the I like how it says everything so vaguely so you have no idea what he's actually trying to imply or mean exactly it's this is pap it's meaningless when it gets to what is ideology, you're going to fucking roll out of your chair laughing. Okay. Well, if they donate enough money, which is kind of like a shakedown. Uh, or it's kind of like a shakedown. 
Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what you do is you create rules and then you charge people for exemptions and exceptions to those rules. And you can see this with Obamacare exemptions being handed out to friends of politicians, uh, particularly out on the West Coast. And you create, you, you, you gather together all this money and then you start pushing green initiatives, which makes people feel good and gives you money to hand out uh, and to invest in and so on. It's just basically bribes for votes and so on. And so the problem is if you want to redistribute income, you have to create an agency that enslaves the poor and serves the rich. And there's no way that you could ever conceivably, possibly in any way, shape or form, not have that be the outcome of whatever system you're putting in place. You create a giant agency with the massive power to redistribute billions or trillions of dollars at will. Of course, that agency is going to get corrupted. Of, of course it is. I mean, this power corrupts and the welfare state is uh, is truly stupendous amount of power. The other thing... I mean, I get to the point where I'm trying to think, like, okay, he's correct, but like, what are his like means? And, like, what are his... Uh, uh... Well, but the, my, my overarching point with Molyneux and all the anarcho-capitalists is if you got rid of the state, you wouldn't get actually... Well, if you got rid of the state as it currently is, what you would do is essentially end up with a mafia state. Oh, totally. I already said that. They like, perform the exact same functions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But just in a more brutal and disgusting and undemocratic way. Yep. Is that the government doesn't have the knowledge, the in-depth local community knowledge, to differentiate between the deserving and the undeserving poor. Right? So if you subsidize the undeserving poor, in other words, people who are poor because they've made really bad decisions... Oh, yeah, we should allow, just because people make bad decisions, we should allow them to starve. Exactly. That's his own logic. Stefan Molyneux has never made a bad decision in his life. I want you to defer to my channel, Freedom Main Radio. Mm. Look at my eyes. Freedom Main Radio. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's not just that, but I mean, what, what poor people should have done is, like him, made the decision to be born into a rich family. <laughs> like, if, why, if, why do poor people choose to be born poor? poor. It's silly. Mm -hmm. done things that you don't want to support, right? In other words, the poor whose choices have led them to poverty. Those people you don't want to subsidize. You want to help them, particularly if they have kids, but you don't want to just keep funneling money at them so that they can go and, you know, buy smokes and drinks and go to the racetrack and do internet betting or whatever it is that's causing them to remain poor or just not go to work. God, you this is like the dark recesses of Bill O'Reilly's mind or something. Is it yeah. mental? Yep. Guys, that uh, kind of poor person. But at the same time, if somebody is poor accidentally, uh, it's just something happened or whatever, then you do want to help those people because helping those people, um, there, it's not going to cause a repetition of the behavior. Well, how would how would he, how would he do, Well, this is the question. And in, if he's okay with helping the deserving poor, a what? body would you have in place that would make that decision? B, uh, how would that body gain its legitimacy in an anarcho-capitalist society? And C, how would it enforce its rulings? Exactly. There's, I, I also feel like uh, his own um, statement, accidentally, someone who becomes accidentally poor from bad decisions, like what I call, if you're accidentally poor, it's because you made bad decisions. So in his own logic, he, you have made bad decisions, so that's why you should not be so-and-so be yeah. eligible for whatever money. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose other than maybe disability or something, possibly. Which he did state in the beginning of the video. This insane man. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, in that case, how would how would yeah the, those three questions I posed? How would they be resolved? Even if even if we accept the you know disability or whatever as his caveat, yeah. how would you do that? How would you, how would you fund disability? I, I don't know. Like a lot of AMCAP say they need charity, but they're, they're fucking they're not going to donate. People are not going to donate. Yeah. To jail and who to sentence to probation, or these are who has very detailed and local knowledge. Now, given the tens or sometimes hundreds of millions of people on the receiving end of government assistance, there is no way for the government to know who is deserving of charity and who will charity make worse. A charity is an incredibly complicated, complicated, complicated system and situation to set up. I mean, I know I do some charitable stuff through this show. It's terrible stuff for the show. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. 
I don't think Stefan and Molyneux's pockets count as a charity, but look at it. Exactly. It'd be really tough to figure out who should get your money, at what level will it help them, at what too much level will it hurt them, are you subsidizing bad habits or encouraging good habits? It is re it's one of the most complicated things in the world to do is to help a, another human being, which is kind of why I suggest everyone can go to therapy who've got problems uh, when they're calling to this show. And there's no way the government can know who is the deserving poor and who is the undeserving Actually, poor. Actually, no, it's not, it's not the most difficult thing to help another person. No. It's got to be a decent person to start with. Yeah, Stefan, which I know you you don't get as a concept, but yeah. if you're a decent human being, it actually becomes rather easy to help people. The undeserving poor want to portray themselves as the deserving poor, right, in order to get resources. So I just there's simply no way to create this this massive massive well-armed entity called the state, give it the power to forcibly create, print, produce, borrow, steal, pay, bribe uh, 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 money from millions of people and just not have that go haywire and not have the rich take it over and the poor become dependent on it over time. So um, I think this is a very, very brief overview of my thinking on the subject. Um, and of course, I saw a lot of people when I grew up in a very poor neighborhood uh, and um, you grew up in a very poor neighborhood, you lying bastard. You went to a posh boarding school in England, you yeah. fucking liar. I saw the change. Like, I really, I mean, this might be too personal, but I mean, these are, you know, how did I change? Well, when I was very young, there was a, I lived in, in a, a section of London, uh, England, near Crystal Palace. And I lived in a, a little apartment and there was a bunch of other apartment buildings. And then in the back of the whole area were these like really dingy row houses. And in those row houses were the people who didn't work. And there was like auditions for idiocracy. They, you know, uh, wife beaters and, you know, lager in the afternoon and smokes and kids running around uh, grimy and all that. Not that generalizing here at all. No. Yeah. No, yeah, um, apparently none of those people worked. What a twat. Exactly. Bro, and, and, and in, the, in the beginning, when I was a little kid, that was like, ooh, you know, those people, you know, they're, right? Not good. It's not a, not a good situation. And it was considered shameful to be on the dole. It was considered to be like, whoa, you have really, really messed up in your life if you end up having to take government assistance. And this was, I guess, shortly after uh, this was in the, I guess, early to mid-70s, so not too long after the big welfare state came in for most countries in the 60s. Now, I left England. Well, my family left England. I did. I, I deigned to come along. I left England when I was 11, and by that time, from sort of the age of 6 or 7 to 10 or 11, not that long, half a decade or less, everything had changed. Everything had changed. And now you couldn't say anything negative about the people. They were the downtrodden. They were the poor. They needed help and sympathy. There was no negative judgment about it. And oh, no, you couldn't be bigoted towards poor people. Oh, that's terrible, isn't it? You yep. twat. Only dickheads like you would say that as a bad thing. That You can't go around being bigoted towards others, you arsehole. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly zoning out. Like, whenever I watch them on you for too long, my brain just, like, shuts down. Well, we're nearly there. Come on, let's just get to it. The yep. fundamental thing about society is that, that when we lose the ability to criticize each other, we invite the state in as a brutal arbiter. Oh. And uh, that is something. That's like that. just pablum. Yeah. Just word salad. Yep. What happened to these people being bad, and now they're totally fine, and that's what effect this has. See, that's the black and white thinking of Stefan Molyneux. Yeah. No one said they were all bad or all good. It, there's levels of nuance and shades of grey involved in all of this, you twat. People aren't just a monolith that you can judge as good or bad. I love how he's like a libertarian, but has this, like, such a high level of authority in his own voice and tone. Mm. Well, that's the thing. It's said with such confidence, even though it's total shit. Yeah. That's what private education will get you. Change people's incentives. You fundamentally change people's value judgments. And... Um, it becomes a very difficult thing to recover from. So uh, these are just a few of the ideas. And what's wrong with socialism? It's never stable. Socialism is the redistribution of uh, wealth through the agency of the state. It's never stable.
It's never stable. Apart from on that, if you, if, I mean, that's not actually what socialism is. Yeah. But if we take that as the definition, that's always existed. So how has it yeah. never been stable? I, I, I don't know. This man is bizarre. That doesn't make any. There's no I, internal consistency in anything he says. It's kind, of, it's kind of like when Sargon said the his collective versus, versus individualist video. Yeah, <laughs> same same shit. Argument. yeah, same argument. Yeah. Core tends to grow, and, and not economic power. Economic power tends to grow and then diminish, right? So, of the 100 companies that were around at the turn of the 20th century, like in the 1900s, only five or so are still around today. So that's so apparently, that's, that's, even, apparently, apparently that's, that's, that's Oh, hang on, I'm getting some feedback. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Okay, I was, I was just going to say, it's, um, apparently to him, that means that's stable. That, uh, I, sy that system's stable somehow, even though it rises and falls and very few of the companies last very long. Brilliant. Really, really, yep. Yeah. Competition from the poor. Economic power tends to be highly destabled. Uh, unstable, sorry, not destabilizing. Unstable. And comes and goes, rises and falls. You know, hey, I'm king of the buggy manufacturers. Is that a car right here? Ah, right? They just can, you know, hey, look, I just perfected the rotary dial phone. Hey, what's that push button? Right? So there's always this creative destruction of the market that overturns existing oligarchies. I mean, when I was a kid, uh, the phone companies were like giant, giant uh, um, orgasmatrons of collective power, economically speaking. And now they've either divested or broken up or, or gone bankrupt. And so um, things are constantly changing, but political power uh, tends to increase always. So you can't have a stable socialism. You can't have a socialism where we say, aha. That doesn't mean, how is any of that connected? None of that is, I don't no, know. there's no thread through any of that. There's no argument being made here. You're just making assertions about things and then coming to a conclusion that isn't based on any of it that preceded. This is nonsense. This isn't argumentation. I know. Amount of redistribution. There's not going to be any more corruption. We're not going to print or borrow money or anything like that. That never happens, which is why these debts continually increase. So, anyway, I hope that helps. Those are my thoughts about. Um, nothing you've ever said has helped, Stefan. No, just, no, just no. to say, mate, nothing you've ever said has helped anyone. You prick. Yeah, I know. As to why it became difficult for me to be a socialist, plus. Taxation is the initiation of force, force and once yeah. you get those basic principles, everything else becomes a domino. Yeah, all, all other rationality and sensible fucking thought become dominoes that fall. Brilliant. <laughs> <sighs> well, I, I, I have two more videos. The next one's pretty short. I, I, I'm not going to play the whole thing of it, but it's it's something, at least. Okay. Uh, hmm. Oh, hello. Uh, Is this? Are we? Are we talking Farage? Yep, he was in Alabama. No, Mississippi. Indeed, he was. Yes, that made the news. Who? It, it did. Yeah, that was all the fucking headlines. Well, really, it was. It was. I know it was like it was on today's paper, and that was it. And today's news, and that was it. Well, exactly. But we got bear in mind, Britain's a shitty little country. America's yeah. actually got stuff going on. You know. Onto the stage. The man behind Brexit, and a man who led brilliantly the United Kingdom Independence Party in this fight and won despite all odds, despite horrible name calling, despite so many obstacles. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nigel Farage. <laughs> Did you ever see that photo of Farage wearing a disgusting purple cape? No. It was there's a photo. I um I forget what paper it was. It was um he was wearing a yellow tie, purple suit, and like a purple cape with like a cane. Oh, okay. You never, you never saw that? I've never seen that. That sounds just ridiculous. <laughs> but it's Nigel Farage. What, what should you expect? Yeah. Anything different? Yep. Thank you, and good evening, Mississippi. I come to you from the United Kingdom with a message of hope and a message of optimism. It's a message that says, if the little people, 
if the real people, if the ordinary decent people are prepared to I love this, that they're talking about the little, they're talking about the little people, but we've got yeah. a billionaire introducing a former fucking uh, stock market executive. Oh, uh, yeah. A multi-millionaire. Uh, I always thought, um, I read it, I thought he was in, like, a uh, baking, or... No, he's yeah, a banking executive. He's made, he's made a lot of money either one. Yeah. Wait, wasn't like you keep like found in his like his like garage or something like that? Like. No, like, I think I think it was around before him, wasn't it? I think. No, he, he invented it in the article already. He, like he was like the founder of it. Okay. I don't know. If, it's, no, I'm pretty. No, I'm pretty sure it was around before him. Oh really? Oh. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that because there was a founder that came out and said that they'd become too racist and he disowned them. Oh, okay, okay. Because like there was an article like I, I can't remember where it was from. I think it was from uh, the Mirror, talking about like oh like like how like uh, he said that he quote unquote founded in his like, garage like 25 years ago. Well, I, uh, no, I don't think that's true. But okay, right. yeah. We can overcome the big banks. We can overcome the multinationals. You are the big banks. Exactly. One and two. Yeah. Ugh. And we did it. We made we made June the twenty third our Independence Day when we smashed the establishment. We smashed. The Nothing's world. happened. Nothing's happened yet. Well, I didn't like. How, isn't the pound still like in horrible condition? It's gotten better, but that's because you that's because it hasn't actually happened yet. Nothing's yeah. changed. We haven't triggered Article fifty, nothing's happened. Oh, so it's you're technically out, but you're technically still in. Well well, yeah, we're still absolutely one hundred percent members of the European Union. And to be honest with you, the more it drags on, the more I'm thinking I think the establishment are gonna cop out on this. Pretty I think we well, I think we might well remain members of the European Union. Today. I think it's the same thing too, because no one has the balls actually, I think, like to actually yeah. vote yet. Well, well yeah, because the politician, whoever's prime minister is gonna have to do this, it knows instantly by doing it, it's gonna destroy the economy. So did it they have to do it by two years, right? Or by two like two no, years? No, no, well then, technically they don't have to do it by any stage. Um, oh. but once they trigger Article fifty, we've then got two years to negotiate a treaty. Oh, okay. uh, an exit, as it were. But to be honest, I can't. Well, I just can't see it happening. But okay. And we did it. Everybody said we'd lose. And what did we see? We saw experts from all over the world. We saw the International Monetary Fund. We saw Moody's. We saw Standard and Poor's. We saw global leaders giving us Project Fear, telling us. But if we voted... He, he was Project Fear. He was Project fucking Fear. Yeah, yeah he was. Oh, the foreigners, the Muslims. Oh. I, I never understood, like, uh, the whole, like, uh, like um, uh, connection between, like, the, like, uh, how do you explain it? Like, Nigel Farage and, like, the, like, the whole, like, uh, like, after Brexit happened, like, like, did he was he resigned or was he like kicked out? I, 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 well, he resigned, and interestingly, given that he's speaking in front of a massive audience with the fucking yeah. nominee, for, uh, nominee for the Republican Party for president, uh, he said he wanted his life back. He said he was going to go into yeah. just become a private citizen. Really? Because right. it looks to me, it looks to me like you're still very much in the public eye, you dickhead. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't understand with these like you kippers like like he's out, but they're still like quoting like like they're still like reveling in his like glory, or whatever. No, oh, yeah, well, he's, he's the darling of the, the far right. Yeah. Um, by a bunch of unelected old men in Brussels. <laughs> yeah, well, it's okay. They don't like me either, so it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> but they told us our economy would fall off a cliff. It pretty much did for like five it days. Did. It, it did. did, and the only reason it's bounced back is because we haven't actually started, but Brexit hasn't happened. Look, Brexit, the phrase Brexit, literally British exit, has yeah. not happened. No, that's no. why the economy is actually beginning to improve. Well, even, that, like, even that's re relative, because we're still something like 10% down on where we would have been otherwise, but you know. Yeah. They told us there'd be mass unemployment. They told us investment would leave our country. And it kind of did. It has, yeah. Yeah. Cameron, then our Prime Minister, but no longer, told us we might even get World War Three, and we saw the commentariat, and we saw the polling industry doing everything they could to demoralise our campaign. On the day of the vote itself, 
that morning, they put us 10 points behind. No, they didn't. That's a lie. It, it, it did. Sky News did. It. Sky that. News did? Yeah. Really? I, yeah. I missed that one because I had it, I, the only polls I saw on the polling day itself were 2 and 3%. No, this I saw that. Um, but Sky News said that in a, like a live broadcast. Oh well, I, yeah. I didn't see that. No. So like, probably someone wants you can probably pull it up and then put it in the comment section. I I don't know what it's called and then or label it. So I I am like I don't want to like waste time looking for it. Okay. Actually, they were all wrong, and they were wrong because what the Brexit campaign did is we reached those people who've been let down by modern global corporatism. We reach those people. I've never seen a hall full of people. I've never seen a hall full of people I more wanted a plane to crash into. Well, yeah, didn't he, didn't he like, crash his own plane or something like that? Like... Well, that did actually happen, yeah, before the 2010 general election. He was in a micro light. Actually, on the morning of the actual election, he was in a one of those micro light planes, yeah, uh, traveling you know, up and down the country as these leaders do, and it crashed, and he nearly died. Oh, right. Yeah, it took it took him about a year to to recover. Yeah. Who have never voted in their lives, but believe by going out and voting for Brexit, they could take back control of their country, take back control of their borders, and get back their pride and self-respect. Now the big card, the big card the Prime Minister decided to play in the referendum is he got a foreign visitor to come to London to talk to us. Yes, we were visited by one Barack Obama. Okay. Yeah, and uh, interestingly, hypocrit hypocritically, he had a go at Barack Obama for stepping into foreign countries' affairs. Yeah. And he's in a stage, uh, basically, I mean, he, technically he didn't endorse Donald Trump, but speaking on a stage with him, you are endorsing him. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you're endorsing a candidate for a foreign leader's position. You yep. hypocritical sack of shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Barack actually went to the uh, United Kingdom when uh, during the Brexit. Yeah, but the, yeah, but he wasn't uh, for that. Like, he was a pre-existing... Oh, uh, he was like a G8... Um, like a G8 well, I don't think it was that. I think he was just, uh, just a, a meet-up of some sort. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, we're NATO allies. So exactly, two yeah. leaders met, and Barack Obama was asked a question, and he said, well, I think it would be better if he stayed in. That was it. He, he certainly didn't go, on the, he didn't go on the campaign trail for it, like you, you fucking dickhead. This guy's apparently supposed to speak in two more cities in the next like month. <sighs> Fraja. No, I, I hope his throat fucking exp no explodes. That's horrible. <laughs> I hope he loses his voice and can't speak or whatever. Planet. Yeah, he was asked a question by a journalist and answered. He didn't talk down to anybody. <laughs> fucking hell. The, the, oh, British pro the British Prime Minister talked down to the fucking British people more than Barack Obama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ...democracies in the world. And here he was telling us to vote Remain. So I, having criticised, having criticised and condemned his behaviour, I could not possibly tell you how you should vote in this election. How, what a slimy, what a slimy fucking backhanded piece of shit. What a disgusting, hypocritical dickhead he is. I know. Fuck not the barrage. Fucking so much. Oh, God. Honestly, I know you have, you have uh, like strong things with Theresa May. At least Theresa May seems at least more genuine and the better, like, like not better, but like, at least it comes off better than this jackass. True, but that wasn't the, the, the choice. Yeah. Such. Like, yeah I mean, yeah. Uh, give me a dog turd before fucking Nigel yeah. Farage. But yeah. 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 Yeah, she's better than Farage. And she's and she's better than Cameron, but not by much. Not by much. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was 
just felt like Nigel Farage has just, like his like face is looking like he has like a ton of plastic surgery. He, no, he, just like Trump, they both look like they're smelling their own fart and they love it. Yeah. Yep. You know, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm hearing you. Uh, but I will say this. If I was an American citizen, I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if you paid me. <laughs> In fact, I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if she paid me. What difference would that make? Just on a practical level, what difference would it make? It, it, it wouldn't. It really wouldn't. Folks, the message is clear. The parallels are there. There are millions of ordinary Americans who've been let down, who've had a bad time, who feel the political class in Washington are detached from them, who feel so many of their representatives are politically correct parts of that liberal media elite. They feel people aren't standing up for them, and they've actually, in many cases, given up on the whole electoral process. And I think, I think that you... I have like the people from UKIP, like like Daniel Hannon and um Farage and the other uh three of them like actually um come out like yeah. like did they like say that they're like libertarians or classical liberals? Like I've never like actually understood. Just, well, they're, they're libertarian, yeah. They're a libertarian. You know, I've, ne I've actually never seen anyone call themselves libertarians. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, well, it certainly wasn't their website. They could describe themselves as a libertarian, non-racist party. Yeah. Any 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 organization that has to put non-racist on there. Oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. A fantastic opportunity here with this campaign. You can go out. You can beat the pollsters. You can beat the commentators. <laughs> and I've had enough of this. I really, I, I have one last video for tonight, and it's um from a creationist who's actually made a quite interesting video recently. Well, that is a fascinating combination of words. Yes. Uh, it's from Ray Comfort's people. Oh. <laughs> like instantly, you know this is going to be good. Yeah. I was what I would consider a militant atheist. That is, I had read a stack of books chest high by Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens. Can I just at the time. say, it, yeah. doesn't, like, it doesn't mean anything in terms of the arguments that are about to be made, but is anyone else's gaydar going off with this guy? Uh, well, uh, well, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not answering that one. Uh, you politically correct bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I find it interesting that a guy who was um uh went was like considered like militant atheist went from three conservative right wing atheists went even more right wing Christian. Yeah. Well, exactly. Well, he, he's found his natural home. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Harris was one of my favorite authors. I had my talking points memorized, and I craved the opportunity to talk to Christians about why they were wrong. But. The gospel changed all of that for me. It transformed me, and it renewed my mind. I find it interesting. How it's, it's interesting that he replaced the word um, "washed" yeah. with "renewed." Interesting. Yeah. I I also found it kind of interesting in parallel, like um, like how he was as as an atheist, he was citing some of the more like neo uh, neo atheists, like um, Dawkins and uh. And Sam Harris. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I, well, I'm not surprised at that because basically this is this whole conceit is bullshit. This man yeah, is never a militant yeah, atheist. Yeah, like, they do this all the time. They bring up, oh, this person was an atheist, and now he's a Christian. No, he wasn't. Don't talk shit. No, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm just saying, um, the atheists they picked were of their own, like, uh, like coin opposite of being under right, but being on atheist perspective. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I I find it interesting that they didn't like list any of the like you like, in this video they don't list like any atheists of like on the radical left or far left. Yeah, well, why would they? Yeah. No, exactly. That's like I just I just thought it was interesting. Well, yeah. Well, it, it speaks to the fact that they're. I mean, 
if we assumed they were giving a fuck about actually converting people to Christianity, but they're not. They're trying to convert people to creationism. And yeah. That's a very different thing. Yeah, yeah, no. And totally. That means they're basically only going after people who are susceptible to extremely right wing ideas. No, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to like explain. But, like, yeah. uh, would leave a prestigious position at one of the three largest investment banks in the world to go work with Ray Comfort from an atheist, militant atheist, to. Well, hang on. You've just yeah. gone. You've just gone from one uh, money hungry, disgustingly capitalistic environment to another. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. What you've, just got, you've just gone from one job as a shyster to another job as a shyster. I would give, I would give this to, I actually would give this to Ray Comfort. I'm not saying he's a good person. I'm just saying, like, at all the televangelist, evangelical talking points, Ray Comfort actually has done a lot more work for, like, like when it comes to, like, poverty in the third world, and a lot of his hucksters have. Well, very possibly, but he's still a huckster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, no, like, um, Ray Comfort. But people, people do that a lot. Uh, yeah. Try and say, oh well, the word does charity, blah blah blah. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure um, Al Capone gave money to some poor people sometime. Doesn't make him a nice person, does it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I got to tell you, I love our new movie. It cuts through the smoke and mirrors and addresses what it really is that would make someone claim to be an atheist. You got to see it. There we go. But that's that's what. Sorry, can I just... Yeah. Stop? Yeah, yeah. That's what gives away the fact that he's, he was never actually an atheist. Yeah. Uh, none of these people ever have been. Uh, the, no, the, no, these no. kind of bullshit things. Because they'll say, claim to be an atheist. Yeah. And uh, no one's claiming to be an atheist. You either are yeah. an atheist or you're not an atheist. Because their whole argument is... Sorry. Because their whole argument is um, that uh, everyone intrinsically knows there's a God. Yeah, I mean, you had that presupposition anyway. So don't lie to me about you were ever an atheist, you prick, because you'd know that it isn't. It doesn't work like that. We're not work. pretending to be atheists. We, we are, are atheists. We are atheists. Which is uh, the the next part of the video is interesting. Like. I can't. I don't think. Um, Oh, I, I think I down by actually the short, the shorter one, but the longer version of this video, yeah. but, um, actual like an interview, uh, um, like like clip footage of Ray Comfort and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson talking in the same room. So I, I think I might down to the sh abridged version than uh, compared to the extended. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's I mean that's interesting though, because uh, I thought that was a slight of hand in terms of their editing in that shorter version because they just had a clip of uh, deGrasse Tyson and then yeah. a quote saying this film was great. <laughs> yeah. As if that's what he was saying. I know they had the actual attribution below it, but in much smaller font. Yeah. So if you just yeah. if you were only half watching, you might think that Neil deGrasse Tyson said that. But, yeah. Uh, this uh, this uh, month's episode is going to be a little bit short. I'm going to cut it off now. Uh, so uh, have a good night, everyone. Boop, boop.